Rejoice, brothers, for you have finally found yourself within the inner circle. Today we unveil the secrets of the Dark Angels. Anvil of War! Review roll out! Hey guys, and welcome back to Anvil of War Gaming. Today we are taking a look at the recently released Codex Dark Angels, Codex Supplement Dark Angels. Uh, before we get into the video, just want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Red Dragon in Orleans, Ontario, Canada. Uh, they threw us a copy of this book so that we could review it on the channel. Thank you so much, guys. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by supporting them. Check out their web store. There's a link in the video description below. Um, also want to thank all of our subscribers. Uh, thank you for all of your love and support over the years. Um, we're slowly growing and uh, we're really, really happy uh, for all you guys have done for us as far as uh, letting your friends know about the channel and uh, spreading the word of uh, our Anvil of War gaming crew. So thank you for that. Without further ado, let's hit the tabletop and take a look at this book. All right, so here we have the Dark Angels Codex Supplement in all its glory, the First Legion. Look at this artwork, beautiful new Codex art. Um, it's a little scratched up here, guys. That's not, uh, it didn't come in that way. I just want a full disclosure. Uh, it got beat up while I've been reading it over a couple weeks here. Uh, I know that this book release or this review is, uh, is a little dated. Um, it's coming out a little late uh, in conjunction with the actual release of the supplement. That is through no one's fault but my own. Um, I wanted to actually read it and understand it before I dove into uh, kind of the uh, the intricacies of this book. I wanted to really give it a good read because I don't know very much about Dark Angels. Full disclosure, never played them. Um, so yeah, this is coming from a perspective of uh, just a player um, reading the rules. And so my uh, reactions to some of the rules may have not, they may be uh, not major changes, but that's, I got to disclose that. So also full disclosure, you're going to need Codex Space Marines in conjunction with this book, uh, as with the other Codex supplements for all the other chapters. Uh, Codex Space Marines is required um, in order to uh, get all of your data sheets and everything that you're going to be using uh, with your army. Um, and also there's some fun relics, warlord traits, and stuff that you might want to use in combo with, uh, with your characters, etc. So, let's crack this open. We've got Dark Angels, some artwork there. Pretty cool. You've got the three, you know, you've got uh, the Raven Wing, Death Wing, Green Wing in the middle. Pretty cool. And now we're getting into introduction, contents. This gives you a breakdown of all the different uh, things that you'll expect to see and expect uh, coming up. Some There's that Codex art in all its glory. What a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork. And just a little blurb on the uh, the Dark Angels, a little kind of chant or mantra. Sons of the Lion, here we've got some Dark Vengeance, old Dark Vengeance artwork. And we've got uh, the Dark Angels fighting it out with, I think they're called the Crimson Slaughter. I can't remember, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the uh, comments below. And Sons of the Lion. A little blurb on them. Then we get into the, the secret shenanigans of the inner circle. Uh, talking about uh, all their, the, the uh, hidden uh, knowledge and lore regarding uh, the Dark Angels. And just kind of a breakdown of all the different... You've got breakdowns of Ezekiel, Lazarus. Just, uh, yeah, kind of cool. Hunt for the Fallen. Here we have Cypher, dual-wielding charging into uh, some dark angels there um he's an interesting character because you don't like is he good is he bad we don't know we don't know um does he have like some sort of like dark agenda or is it like an agenda for good and for the emperor we don't know so it goes on to give you a little bit of history on uh, the dark angels and why they're hunting the the uh the fallen um yeah it's kind of cool it's always been an interesting uh, part of the lore to me warhammer 40,000 lore um, the continuation sort of the Horus heresy for the dark angels and like how their chapter was really divided down the middle kind of, um, and who came out on top. I mean, now you've got the rock, so 
gives you a breakdown of uh, their fortress monastery and some uh, some interesting little uh, lore behind um, the rock and just the, explains the sheer size of this thing and and all of the compartments and aboard. Um, and then we get into so all of the codexes or supplements and codexes so far have had the uh, the war zones and this one goes back returns to Vigilus so it gives a little bit of a breakdown on uh, their involvement in that campaign. Some more artwork here, and then we get into some lore or uh, sorry uh, synopsis and uh, trying to give you some understanding of all the units involved of the Raven Wing and all the different aspects, and then the Death Wing. This will be the first company with the uh, breakdown of, you know, Deathwing Knights, Strike Masters, stuff like that. Pretty cool. And then you get into some characters. Some Ale, Belial. Talks about uh, interrogator chaplains. These guys are pretty badass. It's actually a really interesting little blurb here about the Black Pearls. It explains how, uh, I don't know if, again, if this is uh, new knowledge to uh, non-Dark Angels players, it was new to me. Um, and it just talks about these little Black Pearls that you see on the uh, um, on the Rosaris. And it basically explains that each pearl is gained by an interrogate successfully interrogating a member of the fallen so um it talks about uh, one character in specific in dark angels history who um how many he had by the end i think it was molokai yeah molokai master molokai and it talks about how he had the most and that was a uh, I mean, <laughs> he still didn't have very many considering. So, and that's after 200 years of service to the emperor. So, uh, it just kind of explains how hard they are to get and, and obtain. So when you see a guy rocking a bunch of them, you know, he's a, he's a tough guy. Um, Azrael, and then there's a cool little, uh, blurb on him, initiation, and then a little story, short story. I love these short stories in all the codexes. Totally worth giving them a read. I mean, that's ultimately, <laughs> with all the access that everybody has to rules now, really, when you're buying this, you're getting it for the lore and the fluff and kind of using that as inspiration to building on and and starting your, your army um, or inspiring you to, you know, paint those extra units or whatever. And it also can give you some lore for your characters and everything uh, as you build your lists So and uh, your characters. So this is, uh, yeah, these little short stories are really awesome for that. I find they're really inspiring. Um, and then we get on to the successor chapters. So we have little blurbs on all the different specific sp uh, successor chapters. And, I mean... Yeah, just it's really interesting. There's, there, it gives you a little breakdown of their, their sort of their home world or the way that they fight or so just little uh, intricacies of uh, the specific um, successor chapters. And yeah, really cool. Some of these are new, some are uh, old and, you you know, returning. We've seen, uh, I think the Cal Wardens, I've seen, we've seen them before. Oh no, it was the Angels of Vengeance. Yeah, these guys, I definitely recognize them and that uh, that logo. That actually came on the old Dark Angels transfer sheets as a, an extra little toss-in. Some of these did. And then we get into some models. There's just some uh, talk about the, the squad numbering, company markings, stuff like that. Just, uh, again, if you want to stick true to it uh, and you're doing a purebred Dark Angels list, you want to... Uh, you want to go that route. This is kind of give you a little guide. De Deathwing iconography. Very cool. Beautiful Deathwing army. I love that color. It's so striking. It's so striking. Feels like they've updated this. I feel like they've updated the color scheme a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it's my eyes playing tricks on me or something, but... Yeah, just... I don't know if they repainted their... I'd have to try to find an old Dark Angels picture of Deathwing to see, but maybe I'm crazy. Let me know if I'm crazy. Then we have the Deathwing, or sorry, the uh, Ravenwing. Beautiful. Striking black. The white, uh, the white Imperial -like, uh, Eagle icon. Very striking army. Seeing a full, like, uh, an army with Deathwing and Ravenwing and... Um, the green wing on the table is just so striking. It's it's not easy to do, uh, like an effective version of it. Um, yeah, but I, I think it's super striking. 
I'll get more into kind of why I don't think it's that effective later. But And here we have... Oh, that model needs to be updated so bad. These are three, yeah, these are three super old sculpts. I mean, Asmodi, Asmodai, Azrael, Ezekiel. Yeah, and then here you have um, the newer guys, the newer characters for Lieutenant and can't remember his name. Yeah. Anyways, just have some... Uh, the newer interrogator chaplain. It's just beautiful sculpts. And those old sculpts are still beautiful. They are, but it just like it feels like they just need to be updated. Like as with so many kits in 40k. So I guess yeah, here's a beautiful scene. Them fighting. Uh, looks like some night lords over here. Beautiful, uh, beautiful models. And now we're getting in to the rules. So. Um, Again, it gives you an explanation of the, the detachment abilities, right? So initiation, stratagems, all the breakdown. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, the crusade rules. We're not going to talk, again, about every single warlord trait relic and uh, spell. It's kind of something that has to be uh, discovered. But I'll, I'll give you my, uh, my, my personal opinion on a few of them, and uh, you can go from there. Here's an example of the combat patrol with the combat patrol box available. Um, and now we're talking about detachment abilities. So this is a big page. Um, I don't know how much of this has really changed, um, and who, how much hasn't, because again, I didn't really play Dark Angels and I didn't honestly have a lot of games against them in, uh, in eighth edition. And, uh, I just, yeah, it's, it's kind of new to me. So I'm going to give you a full breakdown. Um, so at the start, we have to talk about Ravenwind units uh, in Dark Angels detachments do not already have the abil Jink ability, gain the Jink ability. So if they have the Ravenwing keyword and they're in a Dark Angels detachment, they gain the Jink ability if they don't already have it. Deathwing and Inner Circle units in the Dark, uh, Dark Angels detachment do not already have the Inner Circle ability, gain the Inner Circle ability. So again, if it has the Deathwing keyword, then it becomes, uh, it gains the Inner Circle. And then if every unit in your army except Agents of the Imperium or Unaligned Units has the Dark Angels keyword, then every unit in the Dark Angels detachment has the Combat Doctrines ability and gains the Sons of the Lion ability, which is really interesting on the next page, or next side here. Um, and then we have if every unit in your army except Unaligned Units has the Dark Angels keyword, then Dark Angels Vanguard detachments that only contain models with the Deathwing and or Inner Circle keywords gain the first company ability and then see the right so we'll explain that in a second and then if every unit in your army except unaligned units has the dark angels keyword then dark angels outrider detachments that only contain models with a ravenwing keyword gain the second company ability and your army can only include a ravenwing captain um one ravenwing captain and one deathwing captain from the same uh from the same chapter sorry so interesting little breakdown here um it really shows you that they're really trying to push you as a player in the direction of thematically or theming your army around a specific uh, part of the Dark Angels faction. Or, I mean, it would be really hard, not, not impossible, but it would be tough to um, create a, uh, an army that had all three parts, we'll say, of the, the Dark Angel, Greenwing, Deathwing, Ravenwing. But obviously, if you did a Ravenwing Outrider detachment or a Deathwing Vanguard detachment and threw them in with Greenwing or just did Ravenwing and Deathwing, it would be super cool, super thematic, and you're going to get rewarded with some special rules. Let's get into that. So first off, we did talk about the Sons of the Lion, which is in sort of their combat doctrine. So normal Space Marine armies. <laughs> As a Salamander player, um, looking at this, it's, it hurts a little bit just because, well, you get, <laughs> your whole army is going to get rewarded with, <laughs> with this as it goes, if, especially if you do that whole Green Wing, Raven Wing, Death Wing type thing, um, or you mix and match. So basically what happens is you have Speed of the Raven. While the Devastator Doctrine is active for your army, you add three inches to the move characteristic of Raven Wing models from your army. And then Raven Wing units from your army that are eligible to shoot in a turn are eligible to shoot in a turn in which they advance. Each time a model 
uh, in that unit makes a range attack in a turn in which they advance, the attack suffers the penalty incurred as if it was firing an assault weapon. So essentially move and shoot, or advance and shoot uh, weapons as if they were assault. Some cool things with that would be um, guys rocking, like bikers rocking a couple plasma guns or something like that in the unit. Um, it really benefits that. Now, with obviously, if there's a weapon that's not rapid fire, um, and it, to be honest, in the Ravenwing army, a lot of them are, I'm not going to say a lot of them, but a, it, you're going to see a lot of like the plasma, etc., coming from like... Um, Black Knights and stuff, but where this is really cool is that it's just Ravenwing. It's not like it's not specific to biker units or or, or the lot. So um, where you're getting <laughs> really strong combinations is going to be from like heavy bolter wielding um, land speeders and stuff like that. So it, it, there's going to be some really nasty little combos that you get with this, and uh, to be able to fire like heavy bolters as if they were advanced weapons. Um, and like advance and advance them and then shoot them as if they were assault i mean that it's really strong so uh moving on from that then there's fire discipline while the tactical doctrine is active for your army uh infantry models with your army um from your army sorry excluding deathwing models can make uh, attacks with rapid fire and assault weapons uh, excluding blast weapons while within engagement range of range of the enemy units, but must target an enemy unit that is within engagement range of its own unit uh, when they do so. In such circumstances, uh, the model can target an enemy unit um, even if another friendly unit are within engagement range of the same enemy unit. And while it's making such attacks, it has a ballistic skill of 5+, so it goes to BS 5+. But, I mean, there is ways to buff that to, like, plus 1 to hits and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can get up to 4+, with specific... Um, it does, it's Yeah, it's not an unmodified 5-plus to hit or anything like that, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and that's really strong. I mean, that's a, that's an old stratagem, and that's just like a, a flat-out thing for your t in the Tactical Doctrine for your, uh, your Green Wing guys are really going to benefit from that. So, um, yeah, and, and to be honest, it, it's excluding Deathwing models for obvious reasons because it's infantry and... Yeah, you can see where uh, storm bolters and the like that would get really, really, really gross. But uh, I mean, you can't have everything, but uh, they're sure going to give you a lot. So, moving from that, we have the implacable. While in the assault doctrine, while the assault doctrine is active for your army, each time a deathwing infantry or a deathwing dreadnought model from your army makes a melee attack against a character unit or a unit that contains any uh, models with a wounds characteristic of eight or more you can re-roll the wound so if you think deathwing knights could take down a knight easily before in the assault doctrine look out this is this is terrifying um really good roll so you can see where it benefits to have sort of those multiple detachments maybe if you just like a min detachment of deathwing a minimum detachment of ravenwing and a minimum green like a battalion of um Greenwing, you can see where you're you're gonna hit get hit obviously with the uh, the command points for doing so, but at the same time, uh, yeah, it's it's still super 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 strong. And speaking of command points, let's get into these. So first company. Um, so obviously, if you follow these, you're gonna unlock these. So if you have a Vanguard detachment of Deathwing, term basically what happens is Terminator, Deathwing Terminator squads, Terminator squads, Terminator assault squads, and Relic Terminator squads. Uh, units in this detachment gain objective secured crazy oh moving terminators with those three wounds off of objectives and like thunder hammer st thunder hammer storm shield wielding mates with ugh, or even if you went the blade guard veteran side oh my god oh i mean blade guard veterans aren't going to gain the objective secured but you can see where these guys are just gonna stay on the tabletop and just be super super frustrating to deal with um if your warlord is part of the detachment the detachment command benefits are changed to three plus three command points so full disclosure on this um plus three command points does not mean that it changes to give you plus three and it negates the minus three initially to purchase 
the detachment. So you just essentially you're negating it, like if you took your warlord from a battalion detachment or whatever. So remember that, guys, because um, I've seen some people commenting on it and uh, and kind of messing that up. So it's your detachment command benefits that are changed to plus three. It still has the minus three. So yeah, essentially flat even. Second company, um, basically same thing, but for um, bike squads, outrider squads gain the objective secured ability. So but bike squads and outrider squads within a Raven wing detachment, van, um, outrider detachment, pretty freaking swell. And again, if your warlord's part of the detachment, again, plus three as a command benefit. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. Moving on from there, we have the rights of initiation. Now this is going to grant you access by spending some points, uh, and they're pretty understandable amounts of points, like 20 points for captain, uh, 15 points for a primary lieutenant, but it has to be equipped with a storm shield, a dreadnought, a land raider, or a pulser, a storm raven gunship, Oh, sorry, Dreadnought's 15, and then the Land Raider, Repulsor, Storm Raven Gunship, and a transport unit that can be, basically, that can transport Terminator models, um, which is pretty cool. You got 10 points. So, plus 10 points, and what this is going to do is it's going to give you the Deathwing keyword. When you unlock the Deathwing keyword, you're obviously not disrupting these abilities and gaining the first company special rule within that detachment. This is really going to benefit when you're trying to build up that entire army of Deathwing. And you can get some really cool stuff. I mean, like unlocking it on Dreadnoughts, etc. just is going to be super strong. And um, full, again, it's, it's important to note that this is not like one-time use. You can use this for your whole army if you wanted to. Um, and it's a reasonable amount of points. I mean, the 20 points on a captain seems a little rough, but what it's going to also do is it's going to unlock some, uh, it's going to unlock some abilities within the stratagems and within the relics, warlord traits, stuff like that. Right. So you have to think about that when you're factoring it in. And speaking of stratagems, let's move on to this. So Again, I'm not going to talk about every single one, but I do feel like I have to mention all of these just because they're all super strong in the right circumstance. All of these are very situational. A really big thing of being being an admech player, a big thing that I've noticed is that um, if you memorize all of your stratagems and you know the right moment to use each one, and this goes for any army that has a really diverse, strong stratagem section, um, you can, it can really up the the, uh, the potency of your army, um, popping the right one at the right time. I do notice that a lot of these are like two command points um, stratagems and two, like two or three. There's there's several on here that are I don't know I don't want to say CP heavy, but there's I feel like there's more definitely from looking at the past book. So remember these are used in conjunction with the Space Marine stratagems from the regular Space Marine Codex. So if you know both of those back and forth, you're you're going to be in a good spot. Let's talk about them. Wrath of the Lion. Use this stratagem in your command phase. Two command points. Use the stratagem in your command phase um, if the combat doctrine is active for your army until the start of your next command phase each time a Dark Angels model from your army makes an attack with a weapon specified by the active combat doc doctrines uh, on an unmodified wound roll of six, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon by one. This is cumulative with the bonus uh, from the active doctrine. So awesome, right? <laughs> um, it's in the combat doctrine phase, but you can see chain swords going to minus, it'll be up to minus three in the assault doctrine. <sighs> minus three AP crazy and this is army wide for 2 cp beautiful uh intractable so this is use the stratagem two command points use the stratagem in your movement phase when a dark angels unit from your army is selected to fall back if that unit has the inner circle circle ability you do not need to roll uh first roll 2d6 to see if it can fall back it can automatically do so so that's an important note that you'll see coming up but there are some special rules affected like the jink and the before the data sheets jink and inner circle rule and what they do for your army so yeah it can automatically do so it's crazy until the end of your turn this that unit is eligible to shoot so you can fall back and shoot and you can fall back with deathwing pretty good 
Deathwing Assault. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase. When a Deathwing unit from your army is selected to shoot, each time a model in that unit makes a range attack. If it was set up on the battlefield this turn as a result of a teleport homer or teleport strike, add one to the attack's wound roll. That's going to make mass fire from, um, um, yeah, from like Deathwing Terminators. Just scary. Uh, Storm Bolters are going to be super strong. Um, yeah, and that's only one command point, so that's a, that's a plus for sure. Full throttle. Use this stratagem in your movement phase after a Ravenwing unit from your army advances. That unit uh, immediately makes a normal move of up to 12 inches, but is not eligible to shoot with uh, or declare a charge with this turn. If that unit contains five or fewer models, the stratagem costs one CP. Otherwise, it's two command points. So it's just a good way to get your Ravenwing units into position really quick so that they can either make that strike or they can claim an objective um, yeah, it's just, it's going to just add that much more to your mobility. Uh, and then line unbreakable. Use a stratagem at the start of your fight phase. Select one Dark Angel's infantry unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, that unit can only be selected as a target of a melee attacks if the attacking model is within engagement range of it. So that means that if you're, like, when you have that half inch of a half inch, so you have that half inch of a model that's in engagement range. You get to make your attacks. Well, you don't anymore. Um, I think that's super strong. It's one command point. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's Dark Angel's infantry, but you can really hinder some like hordes, like orc boys or something like that, where you're only taking, I mean, you're still taking a ton of attacks from orc boys. Let's not be kidding. But um, it's going to be half as many. <laughs> so uh, it ups the survivability of your unit. And that's going to be really strong with stuff like, um, like smaller units, like five-man squads of uh, Terminators, stuff like that, where <laughs> they may have you may have just hampered their ability to take out your unit in one turn, and that's going to be super strong, especially when you think about the fact that they might be objective secured now. Really strong. High speed focus, one command point. Use the stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase. Um, and when you allocate a range attack from a Ravenwing vehicle model from your army until the start of your next turn, that model has a 4 plus and vulnerable save against range attacks. High speed focus. Pretty cool. And what was the other one I want to talk about? You have your obvious ones here, um, just like um, unlocking a second warlord trait for your character, um, making a sergeant basically ability, giving them the ability to take like a uh, special issue war gear option. And then obviously if your successor chapter being able to take some relics from the uh, your, your sort of um, first founding warlord traits and or relics, sorry. Um, and then you have tactical appraisal. Uh, units use a stratagem in your command phase select one dark angels unit from your army within six inches of your warlord then select one combat doctrine until the start of your next command phase of the purpose of that unit that treat that combat doctrine as being active for your army instead of the active combat doctrines you can only use the stratagem if every unit from your army has the combat doctrines ability excluding servitor agents appearing on one and where this is going to start to get a little crazy is when you like combine it with other stratagems and you're dropping like four or five command points in like one turn but you can make a unit just flat out devastate something um yeah if, if you really want to stack it up and get like that crazy amount of ap on a weapon um in addition to you know all of the other bonuses it's <sighs> They need to, they need to do something about like clarifying that because I know that there are some combinations some some definitely nasty or tasty combinations depending on who you are looking at it um, from this kind of kind of thing so I know there were for space wolves so and then we have the hunt two command points or three command points use this stratagem at the start of this first battle round before the first turn begins select one Ravenwing unit from your army, that unit can make a normal move as if it was part of your movement phase, but must end that move more than nine inches away from the enemy unit models. If both players have units that can move before um, the first turn begins, the player who is taking the first turn moves their units first. So it's just a clarification there. And it's five or fewer models, it's two command points, otherwise it's three command points. Still super strong, especially on something... Um, like black knights like the blob of black knights that you can just 
speed up the table and then do some real shenanigans, especially with some other command point uh, or with other stratagems. Then we're talking about secret agenda here. So one command point, use a stratagem um, after selecting secondary objectives or agendas. Uh, do not reveal one of your selections to your opponent. The first time that you score victory points or experience points for it, uh, reveal it to your, um, your opponent. And then note that you must still have a record of your selection. And we recommend writing it down or concealing it. Kind of interesting little uh, command point for, um, or stratagem for, uh, for game use. Getting a little gamey there. And then you have Stasis Shell, Weapons from the Dark Age. Weapons from the Dark Age... <laughs> It's the war gear stratagem. It's two command points. I love this. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase when a dark angel's unit from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, add one to the damage characteristic of plasma weapons, sea codex space marines, models in the unit are equipped with. Dark or um, plasma talons. Oh, oh. Hell blasters. Unbelievable. This is a this is a wicked stratagem, and uh, you're gonna see some serious damage dealt with that. Then we get into warlord traits. Um, so talking about warlord traits, I'm just gonna pick my favorites. Um, there's two or three I think are are good, um, and then they also have the Deathwing and the Ravenwing warlord traits. So I want to touch on those, but. Um, so as far as the regular ones are concerned, Fury of the Lion, uh, while, a dark, while a friendly Dark Angels unit was within six inches of this Warlord, um, if this Warlord has made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic invention this turn, add plus one to the strength characteristic of this model in this, uh, of models in this unit. It's pretty strong. It can get really strong, especially when you're combining it with some uh, some melee weapons on stuff like uh, Deathwing and everything. Cavalry... Uh, er, Calibanite Knight. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Each time uh, this Warlord makes a melee attack against an infantry or biker unit, an unmodified wound roll of 2 plus is always successful. Pretty cool. And then uh, there's Honor the First Legion. So the Warlord is eligible to perform a heroic intervention even um, if it is within 6 inches horizontally and 5 inches vertically of that enemy unit. So if you want to get some Space Wolf level shenanigans going. Um... That's actually kind of funny. Honor the First Legion, and it's Dark Angels, Space Wolves. Anyways, you have to know what I'm talking about to get it. And then also, each time this Warlord makes a heroic intervention move, so long as it ends the move character uh, closer to the closest enemy models, it can move up to six inches. All other rules for heroic interventions still apply. So it can move six as well, um, not just per perform a heroic intervention because they're within six inches. Um, yeah, so that's an important little ad. And then Ravenwing Warlord traits, one to three, um, if you're rolling off, four to six will get you Master of Maneuver. Lightning, fast reactions. Each time an attack is made against this Warlord, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Kind of cool. And then four to six, Master of Maneuver. Uh, this Warlord is eligible to either shoot or charge in a turn in which it fell back. So, I mean, that's pretty strong if you get a really uh, beefed up uh, Ravenwing character going on that. And then Deathwing Warlord traits. Um, I don't know if I'm a big fan of these, but I mean, they're not, they're not terrible. They're not. Anyways. Once per battle in your opponent's psychic phase, this Warlord can attempt to resist one additional psychic power, even if it's not a psyker. And even if it's not within 24 inches of an enemy model manifesting that uh, psychic power. Um, when ta uh, taking the deny the witch test, don't roll the dice, it's automatically passed. So it's it's good. <laughs> De dedicating your character to just that is uh, it's a once per battle use. I mean, it could be it could be okay. And then each time an attack is allocated to this warlord, subtract one from the attack's damage characteristic to a minimum of one. This would have been so broken if they still had Chaplain Dreadnoughts, <laughs> because Chaplain Dreadnoughts with <laughs> with a uh, the double warlord traits upgraded to Deathwing and then taking this would have just been so stupid. Uh, I love it. But anyways, um, still minus one damage for your Warlord still pretty cool. Um, is it worth taking your war as your Warlord trait? Maybe. I mean, depends on how badly you want your character to live. Um, yeah, and then you have your named characters. So Asmodai has the Fury of the Lion. Um, Azrael 
has brilliant strategist, Belial, inoxorable. Uh, Ezekiel has stubborn tenacity, and Lazarus has brilliant st strategist, and Samael has master of maneuvering. So, um, yeah, just important to kind of, uh, yeah, bring out. Belial is getting that minus one to uh, damage incoming, which is pretty cool. So, worth bringing that up. And then we move on to the Interamancy discipline. So, obviously, the unique uh, psychic abilities for the Dark Angels. So, Mind Worm has changed. Um, warp charge, value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. That unit suffers one mortal wound. And until the start of your next psychic phase, if a unit uh, in the fight phase, that unit is not eligible to fight until all other eligible units from your army have done so. So, it's pretty strong. Um, I really like that one. And then... The other one I wanted to talk about was actually Aversion. So Malediction, Aversion has a Warp Charge value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 24 inches of the Psyker until the start of your next Psychic phase. While that unit is within 6 inches of a Psyker, subtract 1 from the attacks characteristic of the model in that unit. And each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract 1 from the attacks hit roll. Pretty strong uh, to make a little combat librarian character uh, running up with your stuff. Um, and then we're going to talk about Mind Wipe. It's a malediction. Mind Wipe has a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Uh, then select one or ability that unit has um, until the start of your next Psychic phase. That unit loses that aura ability. Super strong for shutting down auras. I love the shutting down aura um, uh, abilities. Like the stratagem for the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus Flyer. Oh. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, yeah, moving on from that, we have some relics and specially issue uh, war gear. Just going to talk about, uh, again, key key ones that I really, really like. Mace of Redemption. Um, models equipped with a Power Maul or Crozaeus Arcanum. Uh, this relic replaces a Power Maul or Crozaeus Arcanum as the following profile so it's going to be times two strength ap minus three damage two flat each time an attack is made with this weapon against a fallen or heretic astartix unit an unmodified wound rule of four plus inflicts two mortal wounds to the target and the attack sequence ends pretty strong um is it the best one i don't know if you'd base your whole character around that i mean it has to be situational. It's not going to be for tournament use because you have to rely on fighting a lot of chaos in order to get that so in a chaos heavy meta maybe that's worth taking a look at but um otherwise i don't know uh this one's on a deathwing ancient model only pennant of remembrance if you're com in your command phase selected one deathwing infantry core unit from your army within six inches of the bear until the start of your next command phase each time an attack is allocated to a model in that unit subtract one from the damage characters of the attack to a minimum of one pretty strong um Especially when you factor in things like the uh, inner circle ability, which we're still going to talk about uh, soon, but it's pretty cool. Shroud of Heroes, each time attack is made against the bear, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. It's pretty cool. Um, Foe Smiter, so it's a Storm Bolter. Um, obviously, it replaces the Storm Bolter if you have one. You have to have one. Foe Smiter, 24 inches, Salt 4, Strength 5, AP minus 1, 2 damage flat. It's a nice little relic to, to toss in. Um, if you're kind of like looking for something to spend uh, to relics to throw in, I guess. I don't know. Is it going to bump out some other ones? Probably not. And Cup of Retribution is Chapel Model only. Once per battle, the bear uh, can recite the Feast of Malediction Litany instead of reciting the litany that it knows. If it does so, um, do not roll to see if the litany is inspiring. It automatically is. Feast of Malediction. Whilst a friendly Dark Angel's core unit is within six inches of the Psyker, add one to the attack's characteristic of models in that unit. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. And then you have some... Special issue war gear, I mean, adamantium mantle, artificer armor, all those normal ones are on there. Atonement, it's a plasma pistol, 18 inches, pistol 1, strength 9, AP minus 4, damage 1. Um, nothing to write home about, but, I mean, there's some stuff there. Arbiter's Gaze, uh, each time the bear makes an attack, uh, a hit roll of 2+, plus is always successful, uh, including when firing Overwatch, irrespective of any modifiers of the abilities the target might have. And each time the bear makes an attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. It's all right. Um, yeah, Heavenfall, Heavenfall Blade. 
it's kind of interesting. It's um, so it's equipped with a Maul's equipped with a power sword, master crafted power sword, relic blade, or executioner relic blade, and replaces the power sword, master crafted, etc. Um, it is AP plus two, or sorry, strength plus two, AP minus four, damage two, and each time the bear fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon. Worth taking a look at that, uh, throwing that on a talent master, possibly. Um, and then we're getting into the chapter approved rules. So there's just some uh, some specific, um, um, yeah, some spe specific objectives, etc. Uh, progressive objective here: battlefield supremacy. Uh, first command phase: select one objective marker at the end of your command phase. Um, after the first, if you control that objective marker with a Dark Angels unit from your army, the objective secured um, that has the objective secured ability score a number of victory points based on the consecutive number of um, number of victory points based on the consecutive number of your command phases that you have controlled that objective marker for uh, with that unit with for interesting when you think about the deathwing having objective secured again i'm just really hard on this deathwing thing right now guys <laughs> sorry but oh it's definitely worth taking a look and the, and then it just has the points associated with pretty cool not going to get too further, too much further into that. Crusade rules, um, really heavily thim themed on uh, hunting the fallen. You'll notice that with uh, a lot of the abilities, and uh, this is really cool. I love this lion and the wolf. One requisition point. Purchase this uh, requisition at any time. Select one Dark Angels infantry or Dark Angels biker model from your army that is not a character. Each model. Um, Yeah, each model can only be selected for this requisition once. Add one to the model's attacks characteristic, and the model gains the following ability. Victory over the Sons of the Wolf. Each time this model makes a melee attack against a Space Wolf unit, add one to that attack's uh, hit roll and wound roll. <laughs> I love it. Um, I love it. And it's, I mean, Space Wolves have a uh, kind of a similar variant to that, so... Um, yeah, and then there's their specific agendas, honorifics, crusade relics, pretty cool crusade relics. Um, the lion's roar is there. Very cool. Just, uh, yeah, some stuff to touch on if you don't go in the, uh, the crusade route, which I think is a really cool way to get into the hobby. Um, it's, it's a lot more forgiving and a lot less... Uh, I don't know. How do I say this? <laughs> it's a lot less uh, aggressive than jumping into like the competitive scene because the competitive scene can be kind of volatile at times. Um, and it can also, I mean, not, not, not all the time. It's not, I shouldn't say that. Don't, don't think that it's always going to be like that, but you're going to have experiences where you're kind of walking away with, uh, with a bad taste in your mouth and you're going to have, there's lots of amazing players that I've played against in competitive scenes. So, but if you want to kind of play a, a kind of cool campaign with your buddies and just kind of get into the thematic and uh, the narrative side of the game, then Crusade's a good place to start. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, data sheets. This talks about the inner circle, Jink. So these are big, 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 big rules. Um, so the inner circle ability, obviously associated to Deathwing. Um, if it has the Grim Resolve uh, chapter tactic, or it has the Inheritors of the Primary um, Successor tactic, and it is using the chapter tactic of the Dark Angels, then each time a morale test is taken for this unit, it is automatically passed. Auto passing morale. Woo! Um, while this unit is within engagement range of an enemy fallen unit, <laughs> unless that unit has the vehicle keyword, this unit cannot be selected to fall back. How often is that going to happen? Probably. Very rarely, very rarely, unless you're doing, again, unless you're doing a thematic game with your buddies. Uh, each time that you select the, this unit to fall back, unless it has the vehicle, Ravenwing, or Chapter Master keyword, roll 2d6. If the result is less than or equal to the unit's leadership characteristic, it cannot. It, it can fall back. Otherwise, it cannot fall back. That's where that stratagem really comes into effect, because you don't have to worry about that. Um, and each time an attack is made against this unit, if the 
if this unit has the infantry keyword, an unmodified rune roll of 1 to 3 always fails, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making the attack may have. Oh. If you, at this point in the review, if you needed a reason to take Deathwing, that, and that doesn't sell you, I don't know what will. Ugh. Oh. That's crazy. Oh my god. Anyways, I think that's super strong and you're going to see Deathwing everywhere now on the tabletop. And then Jink. If this unit has a Grim Resolve trapped or tra tactic and it has uh, the Inheritors, the Private Baron's successor tactic, and is using the chapter tactic of the Dark Angels, then models this unit have a 5 plus and vulnerable save against range attacks in your movement phase. Um, if the unit remains stationary, then it loses the invulnerable save. Uh, until your next movement phase. Each time this unit advances, uh, until the start of your next turn, models in the unit have a 4 plus save against ranged attacks. So if it advances, you're getting 4 plus. You can see where that starts to stack with some of the abilities. So, like, example would be using the stratagem to um, move them right off the hop. Then you use the stratagem to advance them. And you can still fire. And then you're getting a 4 plus involved because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Or the double move stratagem um, and being able to just kind of get your guys in position. It's just super cool. And then we get in to the data sheets. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about every specific one. I am going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the characters' um, auras just because those have obviously changed over time. Uh, and with 9th edition, that's a, that's a big change. So um, and I'll talk about a couple of special rules. So Azrael first. Um, speaking of his uh, chapter master rule, in your command phase, select one friendly Dark Angel's core Dark Angel character unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, uh, you can reroll the hit roll. Uh, Watcher in the Dark, he has one Watcher in the Dark with him. I don't need to get into that, but basically uh, all of the Watchers in the Dark going forward um, are going to have the same rule. Once per battle, this model can attempt to uh, deny the Witch as if it was a Psyker. Um, and if the model attempting to manifest the psychic power is a chaos psyker, you can reroll the nine of the witch test. Um, and it talks about just uh, putting one on the table uh, to represent the model, uh, just for your, your remi re a reminder <laughs> to yourself, um, but that it doesn't take up a troop slot. It doesn't count as a model for any uh, role purposes. Okay. And yeah, then you have uh, the Supreme Tactician. If your army is Battleforged and this model is your Warlord, uh, you receive an additional two command points. Rights of Battle Aura. Um, while a friendly Dark Angels unit is with, core unit is within uh, six inches of this model, uh, each time that unit makes an attack, we roll hit rolls of one. And then he has the Lion Helm Aura. While friendly Dark Angel infantries and uh, Dark Angel biker units are within um, six inches of, small, of this model, uh, they were model that <laughs> that unit uh, has a five, four plus invulnerable save to range attacks so it specifies ranged um, as per the changes the uh, the more recent changes we'll say Belial um, awesome character Deathwing oh I can't say enough about them it has they have all the the appropriate keywords also so like I mean he has Deathwing inner circle so I mean, if you wanted to throw him in a transport and foot slogging up the table or something like that, you could. Um, and Blyle, well, I mean, he is a Terminator, so um, we're going to talk about his special rules. So, right to Battle Aura, he gets the uh, reroll hit rolls of one for uh, uh, Dark Angel's core units within six inches. And then he has the Grandmaster of the Deathwing. In your command phase, select one friendly Deathwing core or Deathwing character unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. Um, pretty strong. And then parrying blade, each time a melee attack is made against this model, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Also remember he has the minus one damage warlord trait comes innate with him. So that's, uh, he's pretty tough. Um, Samuel. He's going to have the Grandmaster of the Ravenwing um, command phase, select one Ravenwing, Ravenwing character unit within six inches, Ravenwing core, Ravenwing character unit within six inches. Until the start of your next command phase, each time model in that unit makes an attack, uh, you can reroll the, the hit roll. So he just buffs the Ravenwing stuff, obviously. Um, 
And while friendly Dark Angel's core unit is within six inches of this model, each time model in that unit makes an attack reroll, hit roll, hit rolls a one. And he's got the Turbo Boost special rule, which is each time the model advances, do not make an advance roll. Instead, until the end of the phase, add six inches straight flat to the uh, mo the move characteristic. So he gets around 15 inch base movement. So um, yeah, again, I'm not going to get too much into the equipment. There's Ezekiel. Um, he has the Book of Salvation aura. While friendly Dark Angel's core or Dark Angel's character unit is within five inches of this model each time that unit fights. Until that fight is resolved, add one to the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. This is not cumulative with the additional attack gained by... Uh, so it's not cumulative with Shock Assault. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, Keeper of King special rule. Model has a four plus invulnerable save. Uh, Asmodai... Um, He's got the exemplar of hate. Each time you roll a uh, to see if a litany of hate, the litany of hate is recited by the model and um, is inspiring. Add one to the roll. In addition, uh, add three inches to the range of litany uh, of hate recited by this model. Uh, okay, and he knows the litany of hate and two other litanies from the litanies of battle. So he's pretty. Yeah, he is a beast. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Pretty freaking awesome. Um, he has the Aura of Dread. Uh, while enemy unit is within six inches of this model, it counts as being below half strength. It's pretty cool. And then Spiritual Leader. While Friendly Dark Angel's core unit is within six inches of this model, model uh, models in that unit can use this model's leadership characteristics instead of their own. And then you have your base interrogated chaplain. He has the Spiritual Leader's Aura. Um, Angels of Death. All that stuff. And Aura of Dread. The same. Pretty cool. And then you have your Ravenwing Talon Master, so all the stuff associated with that. Um, I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Lazarus is in here, um, the new Space uh, Dark Angels character. You have your De Deathwing Strike Master, Interrogator Chaplain. I mean, all again with that key those keywords, right? Deathwing Keyword and Inner Circle, so... Um, for list building purposes, if you want to go like full Terminator thematic, then, you know, good thing to, to see. Uh, Deathwing Apothecary. Um, so you have your champion, yeah, and then you have your Deathwing Terminator squad. So you have all those uh, specific options also in there. You also have the Deathwing Command Squad. Note that it's one to four models and then one sergeant. So, um, yeah, that's kind of cool. So you can start off with just two base models. And then they have... Uh, well, there's Deathwing Knights. We'll go to them in a sec. I'm going backwards here. But they have the Bodyguard special rule. While Friendly Dark Angel's character unit um, has a wounds characteristic of nine or less, is within three inches of the unit, the enemy model um, cannot target the character unit you know, within range. With the changing to character targeting uh, in ninth edition, that's pretty cool. Uh, cool little rule. And, uh, I mean, Thunderhammer Storm Shield mates um, babysitting Belial or something like that. That's something you really want to look at. Um because that's super strong. Deathwing Knights, uh, just guys, absolute beasts. Uh, the f Flail of the Unforgiven um, is plus two strength, AP minus three, damage two. Each time attack with this um, is made with this weapon, um, excess damage it inflicts is not lost. Instead, keep allocating excess damage to another model in the unit and the target unit. So I'll just keep spilling over. That's, that's, yeah, that's, I think that was in the last edition. So Mace of Absolution is times two strength, AP minus two, damage three flat, pretty beefy. Um, I mean, so strength eight. And they have the Storm Shields. They also have the Watcher into the Dark um, upgrade. And yeah, and they have all those keywords I was speaking before. Ravenwing Apothecary, Champion, Ancient. And then you have the Black Knights. These guys are beastly. Two to nine, um, sorry, three to nine, technically for the unit. Three to ten, sorry, I should say. Uh, they start off at three models and they go up to nine. Um, very cool. And yeah, so you have your uh, Plasma Talon, Assault 2, Strength 7, AP minus 3, Damage 1. Supercharge, Strength, Assault 2, Strength 8, AP minus 3, Damage 2. And then you get the negative for supercharging as well. Um, Ravenwing Dark Shroud, Land Speeder Vengeance, really cool units. And then you have the Ravenwing Dark Talon, Ephraim Jet Fighter. And then he gets into the, 
weapon profiles and points values. Again, po points values are now in the new format uh, where it's a lot easier for list building purposes. Um, and then glossary and reference. Now, what I can say about this book um, as a non-Dark <laughs> Angels player, um, looking at it at a glance, I would say that um, it, it's a really strong book. Be prepared to see tons of Deathwing on the tabletop. If you have a Deathwing uh, all Deathwing army and all Terminator army. Um, good for you. <laughs> You're going to be really happy with this addition uh, unless they change that uh, damage, the inner circle special rule with the damage. Um, sorry, with uh, not being able to be wounded on anything uh, under 4 plus. So, or, yeah, under 4 plus. So um, they're going to be really resilient. Um, stuff that like. Anything that like wounds on a three plus innately is really going to be affected by that, obviously. But uh, also high strength weapons, trying to kill your uh, your terminators outright um, is going to be really really tough. And then remember that you can mix and match your uh, terminator squads into uh, so you can get the the thunderhammer storm shields mixed in. Just remember that if you do allocate wounds to them in the shooting phase, and you have to continue to allocate wounds uh, and hits to them, so it's no like not picking and choosing as much as it was in previous editions but um still super strong and they're going to be really good and they're actually cheaper now um because i think they're like 10 points for a thunder hammer and storm shield or something like that um pending any faqs and stuff so that's that's pretty good um so yeah the, the great book um definitely getting a thumbs up from me i love the uh I love the art in it. I love the Deathwing. Obviously, I haven't stopped talking about them. Ravenwing are also really, really strong. But uh, I think if you uh, if you mix and match, you're going to get some really cool potential, and uh, you're going to see these guys become extremely competitive on the tabletop. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Sponsored by. <laughs>